about options for a second. I've focused only on stocks for now, and I would apply the same logic to futures trading. Okay, futures and stocks in this case are pretty identical. And by the way, you cannot enter uh, these trades as well. You're you're actually legging into these things. Matthew, can you generate? Can you right click on the chart, please, uh, or on the actual price the the, the line? Right click on that line. And can you go to uh, symbol XOP minus XOM? And is there a way of clicking the chart, uh, the trade tab? Uh, see where it says trade up there, up in the middle of the, if you click on, so you go back to symbol again, and then trade, click on trade. Okay. And now that brings up the XCOP minus XOM. I can click on that ask price of that pair, click on the ask price where it says $1.85, okay, and you should be able to just, just left click on it, no, there we go, just left click on it, see how it's showing, a, uh, it's loading up a trade, buying COP, selling XOM, okay, that's how you do it as one single last all trade, you can get these, get these orders lined up and then send it as one thing. But they are not executed as a package. Okay, it's possible that the Conoco Phillips could get filled and the Exxon Mobil not get filled. Okay, and vice versa. That's because the exchanges don't execute pairs trades. Okay, um, most of the time I I know my price and I've been doing this for a long time, so I just do them as separate trades. I say, oop, there's my Conoco, there's my Exxon, I sell. You know, and I, I, I get it done in, in five seconds, um, especially using the shift click functionality that lets me just highlight the, you know, click on the, the ask and go shift click and buy it um, and or sell it. So it takes a lot of discipline to find and execute these trades. Stocks are easy to trade relative to options. In other words, I can get a stock trade done in, you know, 10 seconds or less, you know, um, well, actually, they were actually executed in milliseconds. An option trade is a little bit tougher. Not so much because, well, yeah, if I submit an order to sell it at the bid price, you'll get a fill really quickly, but the, but the bid-ask spread between, uh, the bid-ask spread for an option is almost always much, much larger than it is for an individual stock. Um, now here we're seeing, you know, weekend markets overnight sort of, you know, the, the quotes are all stale from last Friday. So we're not really seeing anything accurate here. It would be a better example if we saw this during live trading and see what I mean. But if you tried to trade, let's say, one, let's say you want to buy Conoco, you want to get long Conoco deltas and short um, Exxon Mobil deltas. Well, sure, Tom. Why don't you just buy a call in Exxon uh, in in Conoco and sell them, and, and and buy a put maybe in Exxon Mobil? The problem with doing that is even the stocks might be pretty liquid. The options in this stuff are not terribly liquid. The bid ask spreads are wide. So unless you abandon everything we've taught you in all our other classes, <laughs> which is to work off orders and get good fills, you know to actually, you know, give yourself a better edge in execution. Stay away from options on the short-term pairs trades. In other words, don't be trading options for a one-day or two-day pairs trade. I hate that because you can't get the pair executed quickly. In other words, you're working. You, what are you going to do? You're going to work that... Um, uh, work a bid in the calls, work a bid in the puzzle. It could take 10 minutes, and they don't want to trade with you, and the pair drifts away from you, and it's gone, and you're linked out on one side of it, and suddenly you're just locked the call of Conoco Phillips, and the market starts selling off, and you've got no perspective. I hate that. Don't do it. Okay? The only time I would use options for pairs trading is when you're thinking about uh, a longer term sort of trade. Okay, so let's go back to the or let's go back to charts for a second. 
And um, let's go back to the old uh, the old standby um, MNX uh, versus spiders. So type in MNX versus SPY. And let's go back to a one-year chart or a year-to-date chart, a daily chart. Um, day, there you go, day, um, day year-to-date. That's fine. Or one year. You see this pair sort of oscillating around, kind of noodling around. Let's say you thought that over the next few months or next couple of months that the pair would go from about 57 where it is now back down to about 45. That would involve being short some MNX deltas and long some spider deltas. Remember, it's the first symbol, which is MNX. If you think that's going up, you're, in other words, if you think the pair is going up, you would buy that first symbol. If you think the pair is going to go down in value, you'd sell that first symbol. Okay? So I think that pair is going to go down. Okay? So I would get short some M deltas, long some spider deltas. How do I use some of the techniques that we've learned in, let's say, the high probability class or whatever, to trade that a little bit smarter with options? What I would consider doing is generating my short M and X deltas with maybe a short call spread, and maybe my long spider deltas with a short put spread. Okay. What you can do is go through the same process that you would do use to find a vertical trade that you like. For example, if you go to the MNX on the trade page, you know, I would look at what are the basic criteria. I would look at an option that has, you know, maybe a little less between a little less than thirty to a little over, you know, forty five days. Here I would pick uh, September, you know, the September MNX options, that's perfect. Forty seven days. It's close enough. That's that's reasonable. I wouldn't do the August. That's that's too close to expiration. And then I'd find um, the option that I want to sell. Go to the probability of expiring, and I'd find I don't know maybe the the 190 calls or something like that. So I might sell the uh, 190, 192 and a half um, uh, call spread there. Okay. Um, and I because this is a longer term trade. You could work that order, okay? That pair isn't going to go from 57 down to 40 in a day. It could, but it almost certainly won't, okay? So you do have some time to work this order. And if you're filled on the M&X and not the spider, well, you've got a vertical on. It's still defined risk. It's still positive time decay. It's not going to kill you. You do a one lot, okay? You know, there's, there's, there's only so much risk in that trade. So being legged on one half of a pair's trade using the verticals, it's a little less dramatic than it is being legged on one half of a pair's trade to use stocks or futures. Okay? Stocks and futures, in my opinion, are better for shorter-term pair's trades when you're more experienced and are very disciplined in your execution. And I think those, you know, if you, if you if you can do that, I think there are some good opportunities there. For longer term types of trades, I'm fine with options. I'm fine with the whole positive time decay, defined risk approach with options. 